Did you know, for example, 17% of adults don't class sexting as cheating? I love sexting. Nothing turns me on more than reading the phrase, who dis? <laughs> 47% of people think boy racers are the worst type of drivers, and that's a survey of people who have never seen your mum park in a disabled bay and then do one of her funny walks into Sainsbury's. <laughs> and 80% of people say they always visit cultural attractions when on holiday, although that drops to just 20% when you explain that watching someone shoot ping-pong balls out of their foof is not technically <laughs> a cultural attraction. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Ashling, yes. what do you think the nation will be talking about? Uh, without a doubt, it must be uh, the potential United States of Trump. Uh, America is basically about <laughs> to play the biggest game of would you rather that the world has ever seen. <laughs> and the question is, as a president, would you rather a woman uh, loses a few emails, wears a lot of pantsuits, <laughs> or a racist sex pest? <laughs> and, um, it turns out America really hates pantsuits. <laughs> Should we take a look and see if uh, the American election is up there? Uh, yes, the most talked about thing. Yes, it's the US presidential election. Trump or Clinton? It's the political equivalent of being asked, would you prefer to f your mum or give your dad a blowing? <laughs> Rob's team. What do you um, think the nation will be talking about? Uh, what do I think? Um, what are you going for? What's been happening? Brexit. Yes. Brexit's big oh, again, God, isn't it? Is yeah. it the new Brexit ruling? The, the new Brexit ruling. Well, explain. The thing is, the issue is, it's basically not really should we go or not. It's basically Theresa May looks stupid now because she said she's going to trigger Article 50, and she can't. but she can't until all the MPs vote to do it. So that's the new problem, isn't it? It's so bloody confusing, though. It does feel like Britain has turned into an episode of Game of Thrones. You know, in Game of Thrones, they're always winter's coming, winter's coming, and winter <laughs> never comes. Like I feel like every time I watch Channel 4 news, like Brexit's coming, Brexit's coming. You know nothing, Jon Snow. We don't know what's coming. <laughs> I used to have a friend at school who used yeah. to do, they used to hold a pee in. Mm -hmm. And what he used to do is he used to hold the pee in, but he used to hold oh, yeah, the yeah. end of his foreskin so it'd swell up like a balloon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worrying thing is, the people JV went to school with are probably trying to sort out the <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Just going, what, Article 50, watch this first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, it's a tough job. How would you know? <laughs> How would you even know what a job is? <laughs> Do you get sent... Do people send you pictures? No, we they, do. We do. We'll, they'll Skype in. So do you have to meet someone before you diagnose them? Could you diagnose just from a text? E dodgy ground. Dodgy. I, you, you never... Could you make some more noise <laughs> with your massive fucking shoes? <laughs> I think she should be on embarrassing bodies with a horse feet. <laughs> of a shire horse. <laughs> I've got an embarrassing body I wanted to check with you. It just looks really unmanageable. You should comb it. <laughs> um, now, I've got, like, a hole in my chest. What do you mean you've got a hole in your chest? But it just keeps going in. Go on, show us that. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, very, very I'm not a doctor, but I'll have a go. I'll All have right, a well, let's see if... It's like a concaveness. That's disgusting. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> on buzzers. Is it that one member of the audience in a white hat who, for some reason, is, like, quite angelic right at the back of the room there, freaking me out all the way through? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lord, do you have... <laughs> do you have a message for us? <laughs> We've just chosen to randomly like one member of the just audience like an plus. angel. <laughs> really well lit. Take your hat off, sir, we've got standards. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, put it back on. I, <laughs> I have no idea, I'm sorry. Brit's biggest regret. Was it not letting Harry go to a rap? <laughs> Is it the repeal of the Corn Laws? Ooh, 1832. That was stupid, that was crazy. <laughs> they were good, those Corn Laws. Well, 1847, nice call. <laughs> <laughs> was it 1847? Surely it was 32. That was the Reform Act. <laughs> What do you think it's going to be like to sleep with a girl? Good <laughs> <laughs> uh, knowledge, right? Uh, Brit's biggest <laughs> regret. Trisha. <laughs> 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 
Do you think you're a hypochondriac, yes or no? Well, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? If you think you are, but you're waiting to be told, then are you or aren't you? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, the, the test is actually the uh, Whiteley Index for hypochondriacs, OK? So just answer this honestly, we'll see if you're a hypochondriac. Do you worry a lot about your health? No. I've got bigger problems than that, Jimmy. <laughs> Healthy and miserable. <laughs> I'd rather be ill and happy. <laughs> Do you find that you're often aware of various things happening to your body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's something seriously wrong with your body? <laughs> <laughs> I think other people think there's something seriously wrong with I think Particularly women. Particularly the front. Yeah. <laughs> it is. There's a sort of strange uh, swelling at the front. I think I've got a big round... We would have got there, mate. Don't panic. <laughs> Appreciate you being part of the team and all. And... I don't think they're going to spot this knob gag. <laughs> <laughs> Better help these guys out. There's a knob gag and they haven't seen it. <laughs> this is what I call an emergency. <laughs> we're, we're ruling out the possibility that it's the first one he's ever had and he wants everyone to know about it. <laughs> Action! Action! <laughs> 15 Australian miners were sacked for doing the Harlem Shake. So we asked our studio audience, is it important to have fun at work? Yes or no? Yeah. No, we're not asking... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the, to, the question's for them. Yeah. <laughs> not really? Yeah. Have, we, have you never seen this fucking show? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes, Jimmy. It's... Um... <laughs> Good and well to laugh and all that. I mean, we're Germans, we like a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we do. It, it's just we laugh once the work is done. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's important to have fun at work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not a dick. I'm not an arsehole. At the first few Harlem shuffles, I was like, this is funny. You know, like there was Wacky Tacky Tie Day, then that had its day, and now it's Harlem Shuffle Day. I just worry about the trend this is going in. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh, we call it Gang Bang Thursdays. <laughs> I mean, I can see why John and Henning don't like it, because obviously you are to fun what grit is to snow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, 51% of people say they'll take their next holiday alone? My girlfriend will. She doesn't know yet, but she will. <laughs> One in six British grandparents plan to spend all their savings before they die. So, kill them now. <laughs> and 90% of people are happy in their own company. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. Ashling, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? What, what do I think people have been talking about this week? <laughs> <laughs> At a guess, I think it might well be that Donald Trump became uh, the 45th... Was it the 45th? Or the 40... 45th. 45th yeah. president. The final. The final president. <laughs> but, Kathy, you've met um, Clinton. Bill. You Clinton. met Bill Clinton. Yeah. Well, how was um, Bill? Well, I was, at, I was at a dinner. I kind of gate crashed a dinner. It was a 100th anniversary of Labour dinner and there were lots of business people there and I thought some of them might be good to interview. So I was on a table with all these business people and we each had a box of peppermints. And one of the guys said, I dare you to go and get Bill Clinton to sign your peppermint box. So I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a risk of Bill, isn't it? Yeah. Well... <laughs> sign so, your yeah. peppermint box. <laughs> <laughs> So I went over, there he was, he was surrounded by men and obviously seeing me at the back, he reached over, oh, winked God. at me, pulled me towards him and signed my peppermints. Oh. Now I half expected him to say, will you suck it and see? Come <laughs> 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 on news, everyone, come on news. I'm going to watch more news if that's the kind of stuff you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the presidential election is up there. 
Yes, the Donald Trump is the new president. I must say, as apprentice tasks go, Trump's really nailed this one. Hillary's currently sitting in a cafe, crying into a cup of tea, trying to work out who she's going to bring back into the boardroom. <laughs> If Carol Vorderman is so good with figures, why does she always insist on trying to squeeze hers into a dress that's clearly two sizes too small? <laughs> and the award this evening for not laughing at a joke she clearly thought was funny goes to Rachel Riley. <laughs> Congratulations. She looks angry about what's about to happen, and I want to find out why. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, your related question, okay? Worst thing on a date, a fussy eater or someone who drinks too much? If they're a fussy eater, you can just eat their food. Done. I'm happy. See, so that would be a good thing for your positive That would be thing. fine, as long as they actually go to the restaurant to start with, because I did go out with someone that would only eat, um, like, yellow stuff. When I was young, you'd only eat, like, chicken nuggets and chips, so... So you'd go out to a restaurant and go, do you have anything yellow? <laughs> <laughs> You go to a, a custard house. <laughs> <laughs> One of London's that's, very that's fine custard houses. <laughs> How many dates did you have with this guy? I went out with him for three years. What? <laughs> so you're a huge Manchester United yeah, fan. Yeah, I am. You, have you met Ryan? I have, yeah. As well as fulfilling my dream of uh, doing timetables to music, I did some work for MUTV last year. Oh, sorry, what was your first dream? <laughs> <laughs> timetables to music. That's my day job. You right. may have seen it, it's on Channel 4. Oh, yeah. Da -da, da -da, yeah. Da -da, da -da. Like, there you go. Um, <laughs> so I was shown round Carrington, the United Training Ground, by Giggsy and Rio last year. Blimey. I think you had a lucky escape. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very extended euphemism. <laughs> shown round. Shown round, <laughs> yeah. We started in the changing rooms. And um, we worked on our <laughs> Don't there call it that. There were cameras there the whole time, it was fine. <laughs> So you're a Man U fan, yep. you've met him. Has he gone up in your estimations, down in your estimations? I mean, the stupid thing with him was he got away with it for eight years with his sister-in-law, and then he went for a Big Brother contestant. I just thought something. Um, <laughs> is it, uh, it's quite normal. Is it, it's quite, is it Lego? <laughs> Most people think their own nightmares are scarier than horror films. My friend that you need to come, a girl on a first date to see Freddy versus Jason. And then on the way home, he bought her... Well, he didn't actually buy her. They went to KFC, but he wouldn't even treat her to the bucket. <laughs> he wouldn't it. even treat her to the bucket? The KFC. <laughs> Is that...? She had to split the bucket. He split the bucket? <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see a movie and then he split the bucket. Well, that sounds <laughs> like... <laughs> 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 that's, that's the rudest thing I've ever said. <laughs> uh, what else have uh, people been talking about? Another Bond movie? Yeah! Another one. Bond oh, we've got Homeland now. We don't need Bond anymore. You've got Homeland, yeah. we don't need Bond? Yeah. Homeland's way better than the Bond what? movies. <laughs> what are you saying? I don't know. I went to see one. I went to see Casino Royale, because they build it as it's nothing like a Bond film. It's totally different. And it was just another Bond film. What was a Bond film? Yeah, I know. <laughs> if you're issued with a Bond film, it's, it's just a Bond film. Sean Steen, what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? Is it Strictly Come Dancing is back on our screens and lighting up Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> a whole nation of people. I should do it. I should host it. What, strictly? strictly Come Dancing, I can't say it, but I could host it. <laughs> <laughs> How come you're not one of the judges? You'd make an excellent judge on that. Um, because they've already got their judge. I would be an excellent judge, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I would, I'd be fucking great. I'm on the ice, you know. You're on the ice? I do the ice. <laughs> Would you ever consider going on it, Rachel? Would you? I, I imagine would they suck. Are, I had, um... My would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll probably get through. I did do one hour with a Strictly Come Dancing ex-pro before our wedding. Did you? What, you thought I'd treat myself before I met No, my husband it? made me. It wasn't anything to do with oh, me. Oh, to learn to dance? I'm sorry. I misunderstood, <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood that. Don't Most you. people secretly want to do another job, true or false. Well, what would you do, John, if you weren't doing this? I'd quite like to be a milkman. <laughs> I'm a real buzz out of giving people milk. But <laughs> in my experience, unless you've got the uniform, it's weird. <laughs> I've got a friend who's a zookeeper and it is an amazing job. I've got a friend who's got, really? um, got a dangerous wild animal rescue facility in Woken. It's a little house in Essex. There's an emu and he gave me an emu egg, which looks like a dino egg. It's bright green and I made an omelette out of it the other day. Oh. But that's... <laughs> oh, Sorry, is this, is this a rescue centre for the animals? Yeah. If, you're, 
<laughs> if you're eating it's some of them. No, it's an emu. We didn't egg. get the funding we were hoping for, so. <laughs> Hasn't got a boyfriend, so they're not. You're not eating, an, and it wouldn't be an emu because it's not fertilised. It's just an egg. It's Go very like nicely with the leopard bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dean. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are. Rachel, huh? Come on, you're good at maths. Oh. Do the scores quickly. Do the scores. Add up the scores quickly. Do the maths. There's no music. There's no music. There's no. Da 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 da. <laughs> okay, seventeen <laughs> times thirty-five. No, not without the music. Not without the music. Come on, quick, 17 times 35. Is it 595? That is the correct answer. <laughs> Joe, what have the nation been talking about over the last week? Faster trains. Faster trains. Yeah. Between Manchester, Leeds and London. Too, too fast, bad. isn't it? Too, too, too fast. fast. You'll have to change train impressions for kids. Like, it can't go... <laughs> it won't do that, will it? It'll just go... <laughs> <laughs> They binned Concord, which was really quick getting to the States because it cost too much money. But now they've decided to spend 30 billion yeah. just to go to Manchester. Are you saying we should get Concords it's to that Manchester? We get <laughs> that would be good. 30 I mean, billion, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, for that kind of money, I mean, there's, there's other things we could spend that money on, aren't there? I mean, it's a, it's a huge amount. Yeah, we could have a free bar on the train <laughs> we did. for 20 years. <laughs> I've, been in, I've been in a river where you get the catfish just come up to your whole body and do the, it. The catfish come up to your whole your, body. Your whole body. You hold this food, and wherever you hold You're it. You're so naive. Those aren't catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Those are men that have paid good money to be there, Rachel. <laughs> Where was it? In Borneo. You go and in this river, and these catfish—they're like that long. They come up to Ooh. you and suck whichever bits you put your hand in. Really? <laughs> Carl Vorderman has said that um, kids should learn maths compulsorily until they're 18. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's like 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> she said that she'd do it. <laughs> no, that's, it's 18 years. <laughs> Where did you get him from? <laughs> she said it's increasingly important to be uh, mathematically literate in the workplace. As if, like, at what point wasn't it? And why would you commission a maths report from someone who is good at maths but unemployed? It's <laughs> 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 not my fault. <laughs> it's a little bit your fault. <laughs> I didn't feel like people are actually that bad at maths until oh, I've I saw. Oh, seen some an... bad stuff though. Yeah, well, what's the worst yeah. maths I mean, you've well, seen? I did a program for, with the dispatches, and they were looking at this school that had implemented this magical new uh, teaching of maths. And I met an 11-year-old girl that couldn't work out 500 minus 499. This was after a year of their new magical teaching. <laughs> 500 minus... 499. Can you hold up your fingers? <laughs> I'm going to need everyone's fingers, sorry, audience. <laughs> you get how many fingers in one hand? Five. Four. How many fingers in ten hands? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> 40. Yeah, no, what? Again, ask him again. Yeah, yeah. Question? Yeah, well, it's not difficult. Your top's not done up, so it's hard. To... <laughs> Get yourself, miss. Miss, do your top up, and then we can get on with the maths. <laughs> ask me a question with eleven in it. <laughs> Did you know, for example, people in Sheffield have the most fillings and missing teeth in Britain? Finally, something to go on that Welcome to Sheffield poster. 34% <laughs> of the under-30s don't know how to wire a plug. It's easy. Dad, how'd you wire a plug? 7% <laughs> percent of men say they've taken credit for work they didn't do. And that's according to a poll I conducted myself earlier today. <laughs> and 60% of teenagers say they only go to church for weddings and christenings and claim they don't know nothing about no lead on no roof. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Sean's team first. What do you think the nation have been talking about? The people still moaning about the snow. The, well, but some people are slightly more moany than others. Brilliantly on the news. This other bloke was being interviewed on the news the other day, and he was he was saying he said he said, uh, he said my bins haven't been emptied for a month, and the way he said it was like a euphemism. <laughs> 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 Nobody's come round to empty my bin. <laughs> the 
haven't yeah. even given them a lick. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if someone just came round and just jiggled my bins. <laughs> so, have your bins been emptied recently? Uh, they were. There was a lack of bin men, and I had left out a big load of beer for them for Christmas, which was still there until uh, earlier this morning. So they have sex with you for beer? <laughs> <laughs> Why did the sex bit come into it? I was thinking my euphemism. Yeah, I think you were sticking It was just in our heads. Oh. Yeah. But in our heads, it was going brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I'm now cleared out. Um, the, have you been affected by the snow, Josie? i tell you what I saw. Um, I was walking along the road just after it snowed and everyone was moaning about lack of grit. I saw someone had taken it into their own hands and what they'd done was they put um, loads of flour on the drive and then when they run out of flour, they put loads of oats and then they put loads of sugar. <laughs> and I, I was really expecting to see, just next to that, a baker frozen to death. Just... <laughs> I've got my own thought. I use these little sachets of salt. <laughs> <laughs> What I do is, I sprinkle a bit, like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> right, then I get another one out. <laughs> I get really pissed off. I get really pissed off by the whole, like, panic buying stuff that everyone talks about, like, panic buying, because there's a food shortage, people go out and they panic buy bread, eggs and milk. Like, to me, that doesn't seem like panic buying in a food shortage. That's quite intelligent buying. Panic buying would be if you went out to the shops during a food shortage and came back with, like, a copy of 40 Towers and a dildo. Panic! <laughs> <laughs> Is there a business opportunity here? I don't, what, with dildos? No. I Although... <laughs> Do you know what I see, though? I don't know whether everybody else thinks the same, but this weather, you've got some nutters on the road. I did see the two guys that drove on the canal this week. You yeah. see that? Great, wasn't it? You know, the best thing about the story, so it was guys, they got their car, whatever it was, a little tiny Citroen, they drove it along a canal and it went into the water and it reported that they both made it out alive and so did the dog. <laughs> they took a dog. <laughs> Maybe the dog was driving. <laughs> That's why they're on the canal. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to your dog, go on, you have a go. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna tape his paws to the wheel. <laughs> I'll do the gears. Don't worry about the pedals. <laughs> That's what happened. Let's have a look and see whether the cold weather is still one of the most talked about things. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Yes, this is the news that the UK is still in the midst of the coldest winter for 30 years. A headmaster in Hampshire claims some pupils are struggling to make it into school because of the bad weather. He said of the 320 sitting maths A-level, 280 were in the exam hall when the exam started. Another 30 turned up 20 minutes later. Four people went to the toilet, but only three returned. Then 42 left the building. How many were there at the end of the exam? <laughs> Many people in the north have been bulk buying food because they're fat, greedy bastards. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome your host, Jimmy Powell. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 16% of women say they lie about their age from time to time? And those times are between the ages of 28 and 53. 40% <laughs> of men would rather be single than bald. So, finally, some good news for Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> and 23% of people think they're more productive when they work from home. I know I am, but that's because I'm a self-employed erection checker. <laughs> But in other news, former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadic is on trial for orchestrating genocide. Bad enough to commit genocide, but to set it to music, that's just sick. <laughs> and in footballing news, John Terry isn't appealing. I could have told you that. <laughs> Only 24% of people would rather host a house party than go to one. I like to party like it's 1999. Everything's a little bit cheaper and I'm not with my current girlfriend. <laughs> Quite funny, but she's gonna kill me. <laughs> the worst thing is when you turn up at a house party dressed as Batman, and then you realise A, it's not fancy dress, B, you haven't been invited, C, it's Christmas Eve, and D, she won't let you in to see your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, 32% of Britons aged between 25 and 39 live at home with their parents? I guess that can be awkward sometimes. For instance, if you're a grown-up who's currently watching this with your parents, why don't you all just take a moment to imagine each other having sex? <laughs> See? 
Awkward. <laughs> Only 1% of Brits don't own a TV. You know why I call people like that? Anything I like, they're not going to see this. <laughs> and 15% of men have never touched a vacuum cleaner. I've never touched a vacuum cleaner. In fact, I've literally no idea how it got up there. <laughs> the new Call of Duty computer game has been released. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is the most exciting, futuristic, slick, engrossing, brutal Hollywood-produced reason you're still a virgin at 30 ever. <laughs> uh, but in other news, the CIA has been rocked by revelations that its chief, General Petraeus, had an affair. General Petraeus was betrayed by private emails. Private emails is now facing court-martial. <laughs> This is the most disappointing thing to happen in the American espionage community since Brodie's wife stopped getting her norks out in Homeland. <laughs> and the Church of England have announced the Bishop of Durham is to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. He's made up, as is his religion. 25% <laughs> of people do their weekly online shop whilst in bed. I do. It helps me remember what we need. Meat, two veg, dumplings, a couple of baps. <laughs> 83% of British people admit to stealing something from a hotel room. I stayed in a hotel the other day. I decided to throw caution to the wind, open up the mini bar, and I downed all the bottles of bubbly. And then I woke up and realised I was in a travel lodge and all the shampoo had disappeared. 30% <laughs> of Brits think it's acceptable to answer the phone during sex. It happens. Mum, it's for you. <laughs> Did you know, for example, nine out of ten children visit McDonald's once a month? What's that thing that all the kids get in McDonald's? Oh, yeah, fat. 68% <laughs> of men start conversations with strangers while queuing for the toilet. I wish people would just mind their peas and queue. <laughs> and 27% of people keep a weapon by the bed to protect themselves against intruders. I don't have a weapon. Instead, I sleep in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> then if I'm burgled, I just throw back the covers and say, what kept you? <laughs> the release of the new iPad Mini. Experts think the iPad Mini will be the most popular gift this Christmas, so if you work in a Chinese sweatshop, that tea break might just have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but in other news, Conservative Chief Whip Andrew Mitchell has resigned after being accused of calling police officers plebs. People say pleb is the worst thing he could have called a policeman. Of course, they've forgotten about scum, peeler, plod, pig, bacon, <laughs> rosa, five-o, <laughs> filth, dibble, busy, fuzz, tithead and... <laughs> <laughs> And a Brazilian student has sold her virginity this week for half a million pounds. I'm not a prostitute, said the 20-year-old Brazilian prostitute. <laughs> Did you know, for example, by 2030, 26 million Brits will be obese? Did you know if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might lose a little bit of bloody weight? <laughs> the average woman loses her virginity at 17. How's about that, then? <laughs> And 70% of men don't get enough fibre in their diet. Tough shit. <laughs> yes, the Tory party conference. David Cameron and Boris Johnson have been described as frenemies, although I prefer to think of them as frassoles. <laughs> the Tories say you'll now be able to attack burglars in your own home. If you ever try and burgle me, you're going to meet these two fellas. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> but in other news, Freddie Starr has denied any involvement in the Jimmy Savile scandal, but these allegations risk leaving Freddie's reputation completely unchanged. <laughs> and Cheryl Cole has revealed she needed vitamin jabs in her bum to cope after Ashley Cole's infidelity. I don't know if the jabs worked or not, but can I just say to Cheryl Cole's doctor, high five. <laughs> Only 16% of people are regularly embarrassed by their partner's behaviour. Walking in on someone on the toilet is embarrassing. I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> Did you know, for example, the average mum has one hour a day to themselves? That's the thing with mums. Selfish. 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them... <laughs> Carol there, just getting the last joke. Or remembering something that happened earlier in her life. Who knows? 25% <laughs> of lap dancers have university degrees. Yes, most of them have a tutu and a French maid's outfit and a police <laughs> uniform. <laughs> and 20% of Brits have travelled abroad with their pet, which rises to 98% of Geordies. Come on, pet, where are we on holidays? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the competition.
competition for Strictly Come Dancing is heating up. Lisa Riley's odds have gone from 66 to 1 to 10 to 1. Mmm, she thought, 10 to 1, lunchtime. <laughs> But in other news, cyclist Bradley Wiggins has been knocked off his bike by a motorist. Bradley Wiggins was rushed to hospital where he was immediately stabilised by adding two smaller wheels to his big back wheel. <laughs> it's been revealed the Prime Minister and Rebecca Brooks exchanged intimate text messages. Our lawyers have been very strict on this one, so with that in mind, I'd just like to say Rebecca Brooks is a blanking ginger blank who blanked for Rupert Murdoch, blanked to the Leventon Inquiry, blanked to the police, and once even blanked a horse while David Cameron stood by blanking. <laughs> <laughs> and in India this week, 50 elephants went on a drunken rampage after drinking 500 litres of moonshine. In other news, a hen party from Wigan has gone missing. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 25% of children aren't allowed to play conkers at school? I wasn't allowed to touch my conkers at school. Apparently, it was putting off the netball team. 13% <laughs> of people have been visited by a dead person. Or, to put it another way, 13% of people have fallen asleep thinking about their nan. <laughs> and a survey's revealed lap dancers pay four times as much for car insurance as nurses. Presumably because lap dancers are more at risk of being rear-ended. <laughs> the Church of England have refused to allow female bishops, denying male bishops the thing they so desperately wanted. Poontang on tap. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 48% of men in long-term relationships don't know their own clothes size? Although if you've been in a relationship more than five years, chances are it's extra large. <laughs> Only 2% of the Earth's population are natural redheads, so technically it wouldn't be genocide, more of a tidy-up. <laughs> <laughs> and 94% of men consider themselves romantic. I'm really romantic. I often stand under my girlfriend's window and serenade her with my guitar. I say my girlfriend, it's the woman next door. I say serenade, I mean stare. And also, that's not a guitar I'm holding. <laughs> yes, the X Factor is heating up. Apparently, Rylan had eight bum notes last Sunday, each handed to him by Louis, saying, meet me in the dressing room after. <laughs> Have you written a book? Yeah, I've written a book, yeah. An autobiography? No, God, no. If I've learnt anything, it's the less that people know about me, the better. <laughs> no, it's just a book about jokes. About jokes? Yeah, not... I mean, not, not an amazing... It's not, it's not as good as... It's not as good as this book. <laughs> Personally, I don't care if a book's been written by a celebrity like Rod Stewart or Simon Cowell or a member of the public like Kerry Katona. <laughs> Did you know, for example, over 1.6 million Britons still live at home with their parents? And we call those people children. <laughs> it takes giraffes up to an hour to have sex, but most of that is necking. <laughs> And 65% of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 30% of people would consider moving abroad after a holiday? I read about two girls who recently went on holiday to Peru, and they liked it so much they're staying for six to eight years. <laughs> 20% of travellers claim to be members of the Mile High Club. I once had a near miss on a flight to Thailand. Sorry, not near miss. Pre-up transsexual. <laughs> and 23% of Brits have never visited France, which means they've never experienced the thrill of sitting in a cafe on the Champs-Élysées and being put off their croissant by the sight of a woman's hairy armpits and the smell of dog shit. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Team. What do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Strictly come dancing has started again. <laughs> it's back on. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it is huge. It's massive. <laughs> Although you, you, the lineup you... is a bit. Well, I think most of them should bring a utility bill. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there were huge stars on there. Uh, There's who? Which, Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Yeah. I said. <laughs> No, I did, I did that as well. I've been, <laughs> I've been locked in a house with Vanessa Feltz, so I can testify. <laughs> of course. She's, yeah, I did... When uh, you did Big Celebrity Big Brother. I did Comic Relief Big Brother in 2001 with Vanessa Feltz, and, um, and she is... Uh, she's, she's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you last in that, Jack? I was in the whole week. I won it, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I remember charm that. Charm and personality that yeah. shines through. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, captured the nation's hearts. I, I, exactly. <laughs> people, people just sort of warm to me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think people kept you in because they knew it would irritate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, do you think maybe she's just said, like, I'll come and do the show, but I'm just not gonna do too much because I'm a bit heavy? Yeah. <laughs> like, do you mean, like, serious, or what do you...? No, I mean, like, seriously. Oh, no, you're like... being incredibly bitchy. OK, great. No! I didn't realise where you were going with this, no, but no, I'm with you. Can't you can't go, no, 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 you just called her fat. And no, go, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't call her fat. Word. I didn't say shit, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> She hasn't danced much, and to me, if you're going on a dancing show, you should dance. Sean, presumably you're pretty... I mean, you watch the show. Would you go on the show? Would you go on Strictly? Well, you know, if, um... <laughs> if my whole career fell apart in tatters... <laughs> and ..I'd really no option and a lot of tax bills to pay and... <laughs> ..situation... <laughs> no, I actually didn't mean that. <laughs> I mean, you only go on it if your career has reached a certain point. Basically, okay. you, you have to throw yourselves up into the sort of, like, tides of popularity and hope you get washed up on a beach, not smashed to pieces on the rocks. <laughs> right, then, well, on that, on that note, Jamelia, <laughs> would you do it? Stop. What? <laughs> Honest to God, I get asked to do it every single year, and just hell no. It's one of the two biggest shows on TV, so, I mean, it's... Do, do, you, know, do you know this? Stupid amounts of money they offer you to do that show. I, I would just oh, what, wouldn't... How, go on, just, how much did they offer you? No, they're, like, ridicu oh, I mean, ridiculous what, amounts of money. You can buy a house, put it that way. And yeah, I, but I you live in Birmingham. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Strictly is up there. Yes, indeed, Strictly Come Dancing has started again. In the first episode of this series of Strictly, everyone agreed Abby Clancy stole the show. Typical scouser. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 31% of men say they have a bucket list of things to do before they die. Number one, find out where that smoke's coming from. 12% <laughs> of British people have a friend with benefits. I've got a friend with benefits. She's on benefits. <laughs> And 27% of people believe in reincarnation. My uncle died and came back as a woman. I say died, he went to Thailand. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> the Labour Party held their annual conference in Liverpool this week. Ed Miliband has admitted to some of the mistakes the Labour Party made when Gordon Brown was leader. Mainly that they had Gordon Brown as leader. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. I think it's that footballer, Tevez. Am I saying his name right? Yeah. yeah. What about the footballer well, Tevez? He... I don't... I really don't know anything about football, but I think he's You don't really need to say that twice. He's really expensive, <laughs> and he refused to go on and some big match. And there was some sort of row, and you saw him being like, well, I'm not going on. Which I kind of liked, so the kind of thought of, like, an obnoxious... Because I love an obnoxious pop star. You know, like... It's pop the sort of thing that Axel Rose wait. would do. Yeah, I love that, like, not going on yet. Axel Rose shouldn't have to go on because he's not a footballer, so... <laughs> it's a good point well made, Sarah. I can't argue with that. You're on £200,000 a week and your boss says, you won't do half hour for us, would you? Yeah, exactly. You can't really go, no, I don't want that today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really asking. Can you go and definitely do I don't see why he's still here. He's been in the country four years and he wants to leave. That's his big thing. He didn't want to play because... I don't want to be in the country, I want to go home. I can't speak any English. I've been here four years. The only word he's got to learn is, like, kick, goal. <laughs> like, the Spanish for goal is goal. The Spanish for football is football. Like, it's not like we're asking him to learn Sanskrit. He <laughs> also said it was a miscommunication, didn't he? He said it... Because what, what he actually said was, OK, boss, where do you want to play? But because of his accent, it came out like, um, I fucking hate Man City. <laughs> You can piss off, shove it out your ass, you piece of shit. <laughs> That's an accent thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, uh, just a dialect. Well, because he's from, he's from the what Catalan region. What he actually region. said was, que. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know why he didn't go up? Like, why he just refused? Was what? it just, had he just realised that football's a bit shit? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, love. <laughs> just, just one, like, fucking yes! <laughs> Finally, someone said it! <laughs> if you look at Tevez, though, he's a very... Unfortunate-looking chap, isn't he? He does. He looks like Shrek's ugly mate, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I, I refute that. Let's have a look. He's a great-looking guy. 
in fairness to him, that was a very sunny day. <laughs> His lash is too strong. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's too strong. <laughs> Well, he didn't go on, to be honest, because in that picture I can see he's already broken pretty much the rule of football. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, you see? I scored a goal! <laughs> he's attention-seeking, isn't he? Let's face it, if you're gonna... If you're gonna go to a football match and sit on the sub -spent. you're probably going to go on, let's face it, you've got to do that. And then he just says no, he's obviously an attention seeker. You, you think he's an attention seeker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously an attention seeker. It's <laughs> <laughs> the most attention seeking sort of thing I've ever bloody seen. <laughs> that, my friend, is how you get attention. Let's have a look and see whether Carlos Tevez is one of the most talked about people this week. <laughs> yes, Carlos Tevez was told he'd never play for Man City again after refusing to go on as a sub. Carlos Tevez earns quarter of a million pounds a week. To put that in terms the layman will understand, fucking hell. <laughs> The average person is capable of making more than a thousand facial expressions. And this is the one I made when I heard that statistic. <laughs> KFC is the most popular fast food restaurant in China. You would have thought it would have been a Chinese. 55% <laughs> of men men wash their hands after going to the loo. What I do, and here's a tip for you, is I wash my winky in the morning and then I'm good for the rest of the day. <laughs> right, let's get started. Sean? Well, I think definitely you've been talking about bird flu. The approach of bird flu that's coming to us. People are very worried about it, aren't they? My mum panics because she reads all this stuff and she phoned up last week because she thought her, her budgie had got it, Sooty. She's got a budgie. And, uh, and apparently it was just in the corner of the cage shivering and won't go up its ladder. And he loves going up his ladder, Sooty. He loves it. <laughs> what happened was, turned out the grandkids had been getting him out of the cage and holding him over a globe of the world and spinning it down and it just freaked him out. I'm too high! I'm too high! <laughs> bird flu. Bird flu. Horse run. <laughs> says don't panic says don't panic mm. if it gets into a stress situation just move them all inside but that's where we are <laughs> that can't be right. i don't think the chickens are too bothered really because compared to what the farmer's got in store for them flu's a bit of a holiday really isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if i was a chicken i'd be snogging other chickens trying to catch them <laughs> they've been talking about 20 million people might die if the bird flu kicks off we're all right we're blokes aren't we <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to say it, Vic, and I'm glad it was you. See what I've done there? Yeah. yeah, it's just the birds who are going to get it, isn't it? <laughs> if only, Vic. And then me and you could just run yeah. off together into sunset. <laughs> <laughs> like we did last week. Yeah. Well, let's have a look and see whether avian bird flu is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Yes, the second most talked about thing this week was bird flu. The deadly H5N1 virus is close to Britain. Coincidentally, H5N1 is Bernard Matthews' postcode. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, Neil, Dave, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Wembley's not finished. Mm. Fuck off, really. Yeah. <laughs> Big shot. No surprise. I, I was looking at some sort of report on it, it said that it's going to have 2,000 toilets. Wembley's going to have 2,000. And that, that, there you are, there's your delay. Waiting for the plumber, aren't they? <laughs> I, I thought, actually, that one of the problems is, is a language problem, isn't it, with the Australian builders? Because they use have the rising inflection. Don't they? When they finish a sentence, they, they rise up as if it's a question. So I think when they say, like, tomorrow you'll start work at eight... <laughs> ..the blokes go, that probably means about half ten. <laughs> I just like the part that they were bollocking them for doing coke. I wouldn't make them do it, just make it do it all faster. <laughs> That's the answer, Kelly. People haven't been brave enough to say it, but drugs are what these builders need. <laughs> Think of what you could build with 750 million. You could have a, a ladder to the moon for one. <laughs> one for one pound? Well, that's better than having a big stadium, isn't it? A, a, you know, a ladder to the moon. Yes, but if you could deliver, Vic, I'd invest. <laughs> I've got 
750 million to play with. I could have a pipe that goes down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench that you could slide down <laughs> and get fired out the other side. <laughs> We haven't thought this through. <laughs> a ladder to the moon. <laughs> ladder. No, said well, like we that, it sounds a lot more impressive. A ladder to the moon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Mr. Bond. <laughs> we'll build the biggest water slide in the world. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether, whether Wembley is one of the most talked about things this week. Of course it is. Yes, it yeah. was. 35% of you were talking about the fact that Wembley Stadium will not be ready for this year's FA Cup final. The delays have thrown the fixtures list into chaos. Chelsea will now be playing Bon Jovi in the charity shield. 31% <laughs> of American men would abandon their partner in favour of their own safety. Is that true or is it false? We, think it's, we now think it's false. You are right, it is false. 7% yeah. of US men would abandon a loved one if attacked by a bear. Never mind a bear, I nearly left my girlfriend when that whale came up the Thames. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 25% of men think their eyes are their best feature? Let me think. Buns, guns, pecs, nads, little Jimmy Johnson, eyes. Six best. Six. <laughs> the world's oldest goldfish was 42. He put his long life down to regular early morning swims. <laughs> and the average life expectancy in the UK is 80 years. Does not include Scotland. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> OK, John Sting, what's the other most important moment in life? People do babies, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you made it sound people. like litter. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason I want to have kids is so I can look at other people's without being accused of being a paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> like when you walk past a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean in that word. No, no, mean... dig yourself out of this. I'd love to see this. <laughs> he's got a what shovel. Got he's on, the, he's on, the, on your marks, John, <laughs> and dig your way out of that one. Sometimes you're walking past a playground. Sure. <laughs> You've no, stopped. He's, even, he's going deeper before he even starts the dig. <laughs> Sometimes you're walking past a playground and you just want to be able to watch the abandon of children. <laughs> so it's like watching nature. It's like when you watch the leaves change in autumn. Sometimes you want to watch a kid on a swing and think, oh, I used to be on swings before I had jobs and before people judged me and before I wasn't allowed to be in a park. And then before, <laughs> before you know it, you've been there half an hour and someone says, oh, which one's yours? You go, oh, I'll go then. Fine. Why not? <laughs> It's a nice... And sometimes you a baby say, will look at you. What you should say is I haven't chosen yet. <laughs> <laughs> Dr Christian, yeah, um, anyway. is there anything that we can do to get John Kemetley castrated? <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't got kids? Absolutely no desire to have children whatsoever. Yeah, you can't... They just linger too long and you they can't do, have a they life. They do linger, don't they? Yeah. They go on living is another way to say they yeah, go they on. <laughs> Yes. I mean, if they lasted five years, it'd be perfect, but no. I never wanted kids, really. I just wanted one of those big American fridges. You know, the really, really big ones. Yeah. I thought it'd be ridiculous. I get one of those. It's just me and my partner there, and like a lasagna and a lemon rolling around in <laughs> it. I thought I'd better have some kids, fill it out with yogurt. <laughs> Well, I didn't think that I was very maternal until I had my baby. Isn't that a bit late, though? Yeah. <laughs> that really is. That's fine, isn't but it? But then it was fine. No, honestly, but, you know... We yeah, but what if it wasn't? You can't put it back in, can you? You can't, can you? <laughs> no, you can't. But see if you do have every drug under the sun. Don't... If somebody comes at you Not with whilst heroin, you're pregnant, no, I should confirm. No, 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 but in labour. <laughs> in labour, have everything. You know these folks that lie on bean bags and they have candles? No. No, 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 no. You want to be numb, as God intended. You want to be numb from the waist down, knowing nothing about it until they give you that, a beautiful baby. That's conception or birth. Uh, well... have everything. Have I've never had anything more Scottish than that. Take all the drugs that you can. <laughs> Seriously, all of them. Get all of them. It's brilliant. <laughs> It's like you only had the baby for the high. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is really. Honestly, I recommend it's it. It's expensive, though. No, it it's only very expensive. Well, they've, they've worked out. <laughs> no, it doesn't cost you anything. It's like the National Health Service. No, no, you're saying having baby? children, no, not... I mean, raising oh, children. Oh, not oh, the yeah. drugs. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy that can get it for a favour. <laughs> 
Yeah, to raise the child is something that the average they have for its lifetime is two hundred thousand pounds, yeah. and that's not factoring in daddy's drinking, <laughs> daddy's gambling. It's all worthwhile when they turn thirteen and tell you that they hate you and wish you were dead. <laughs> but then they'll look after I've you. I've fast tracked that. They'll, they'll look after you when you're old. What? When you're old, they'll look after you. All the money that you've paid out, they'll have to. I'm going to use money. the money I save to look after me. <laughs> Although I don't have kids, because tragically my girlfriend and I can't have children the way we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see whether having children is one of the most important moments in life. I have a feeling it will be. Yes, of course. Number one. Yes, having children. Doctors warned women should have a baby by the age of 35 to avoid the risk of being deafened by their ticking biological clock. <laughs> if you were to count up every hot dog sold outside football grounds in Britain on a Saturday, chances are your nickname's Rain Man. <laughs> 40,000 Americans are injured in the toilet every year. Most accidents are from people slipping on a wet floor. Just goes to show you've got to look out for number one. <laughs> Half of all the people who have ever smoked have now stopped. Sounds good, but when I say stopped, a lot of them have died. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Dave, your team to go first. What have the nation been talking about this week? Um, well, around Owe, it's been this smoking ban. I think the government like, reneged on the deal again, where they said that uh, it was going to be a partial ban. I know they've changed their mind and it's a full ban. They were going to have, like, um, designated areas in pubs, weren't they, for smoking? And to my mind, that's like having a swimming bath with designated urinating areas. <laughs> they have banned in some American cities, haven't they? Do you approve? Well, as I live here, I couldn't give a fuck about what's going on. <laughs> there are times you really fancy a cigarette, and it's going to be quite, it's going to be quite tricky. Like, you know, if you just cheated death in an air disaster. You really want to have a cigarette, then? <laughs> I reckon that they'll let you. Yeah, do you reckon? If you've just cheated death in an air disaster. disaster. Yeah. But I you won't care, anyway, will you? Yeah. Just go, piss off. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, you put I, that I, plane out. <laughs> Are you saying, like, if, you're, if your seat somehow gets thrown out of the plane into yeah. a pub? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the smoking ban is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Get in. Yes, it Get is. Away. Interestingly, the ban on smoking will not apply to Wales, which is one more reason to visit Wales, which brings the total to one. <laughs> We've got two more to get. Buzz in if you think you know what the nation have been talking about. Is it the US Vice President going out hunting and shooting his mate? Which <laughs> 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 is really funny. I mean, he, thought, he said, I'm mistooking for a quail. Then he went, did you see the size of that fucking quail? <laughs> It's a shame he didn't go with Bush, though, isn't it? Just, that would have been nice if he'd mm. shot Bush. That would have been perfect. If George Bush had popped out of a bush and he'd blown his stupid face off. <laughs> now, Reg, you're, you're an American man. Have you been hunting? Uh, no, I've never been hunting. I've been in the forest with a gun, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't threaten me, Reg. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was doing something else, though. Yeah. <laughs> I do think you shoot quails, because when I went on hunting, I only said that you showed... Ferrets, rabbits. You went hunting? You sure you weren't working for rent to kill No, <laughs> You weren't hitting rats with a shovel. <laughs> and I'm going to go to shoot the ferrets. You're going to go and shoot ferrets? In the season. In the season? <laughs> Is there a season for shooting ferrets? That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you mean pheasants? Pheasants! <laughs> Right, should we have a look and see if Dick Cheney shooting someone in the face is one of the top stories this week? Yes, it is. Hey. Yes, 52% of you were talking about American Vice President Dick Cheney shooting a lawyer in the face in the woods outside Dallas. 60% of air passengers have had problems with what? The pilot. I just judged this on one incident where I was flying recently to Alicante and we got up to 35,000 feet. He came on and went, uh, pilot, Captain Johnson speaking, Reached our cruising altitude, 35,000 feet, on the way to Alicante. Weather on route's fire. SHIT! <laughs> that was it. Uh -uh. And we sat there like, 
<laughs> you came back on and you went, I'm really sorry, I might have scared some passengers. And what happened was, in the middle of my announcement, the stewardess brought me a coffee and spilt it on me. And that was all he was, I'm sorry. And he said, you want to see the front of my pants? <laughs> and some bloke at the back went, you want to see the back of mine? <laughs> I would think the seats would be a problem. Like, like especially like in America, like, it, like say for instance, you got a fat ass. And <laughs> in America, a lot of people got a fat ass. And I would think that the seats would consistently be a problem over there. But I've seen a few people over here, and they seem like, well, I've seen a lot of fat people, but they ain't got no fat ass. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. <laughs> Reg, uh, uh, that's exactly the right answer. It is 60% of air passengers have had problems with their seat. The main problem being it's next to a man whose shoe is ticking. Did you know, for example, 90% of people think that Christmas is too commercialised? And there's a special name for those people, tight-fisted twats. <laughs> if you're watching, children, I don't want to spoil Christmas for you, but not only is Santa made up, so's Jesus. <laughs> And your dog didn't go and live on a farm. <laughs> different religions celebrate Christmas in different ways and at different times. Some people in the Middle East, for example, celebrate their Christmas on September the 11th. <laughs> Sorry, we've got a lot of Al Qaeda in, have we? <laughs> and it takes up to 15 years to grow a six foot Christmas tree but just 30 seconds to lob it over the fence into your neighbour's garden on January 6th. <laughs> Sean, Biggins, Jack D, what are your favourite things about Christmas Day? Well, first, Jimmy, I'd just like to say a very Merry Christmas to you, Jimmy. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful seasonal period. <laughs> Filled with joy and good tidings. And that Santa brings you everything you want. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> Time. Guess how you'll be spending Christmas. He gets visited by three ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas. <Jim>. Yeah. <laughs> bah humbug. <laughs> so, what have you got planned? Well, what do you like about Christmas Day? Uh, where do I start? <laughs> What about you, Jack? <laughs> it's a busy time of year for me, you know, because there's so much more joy to kill. <laughs> Let's ask uh, Chris Biggins. I see something, you know, if I'm on a holiday or if I'm on, on a, somewhere and I think, oh, I'll keep that and I'll put it in this cupboard, and then it's, it's there, you see. You don't have to go all that mad Christmas shopping at the last minute, you yeah. know. Did, did, have you ever got anything you, you liked, Jack? What, for Christmas? Yeah, present-wise. I've, no, I've, I've just, well, uh, the thing is, you know, when you grow up, you stop being excited. I haven't been excited about anything since I was three, and I realised <laughs> it's You've not You've been, been like this since you were three? <laughs> yeah, more or less, yeah, it's stuck with me. I sort of was about seven or eight. I remember Christmas Eve, I was lying in bed, uh, me and my brother's in the same bedroom, and they were younger than me, and about half eleven, there's a weird time, about half eleven, where the kids are pretending to be asleep, mm. and the adults know that they're not asleep, but they let it go because it's Christmas Eve, and there was some sleigh bells. Just outside the, the house, and we're like a little bit excited, sleigh bells. Mm. And then my dad leant out of a window, so about half eleven at night, he leant out of a window and he went, Oi! I don't care who you are, get the bloody hell off my roof! <laughs> and we were in our room going, Oh my god, it's Santa, and Dad's just <laughs> him. <laughs> do you like Christmas shopping? No, I don't. I do it on the internet. You do it all on the internet? On the internet, it's much, much easier. You can sit there in your nice pyjamas, you know, with Santa <laughs> on them, or snowmen. Or whatever. <laughs> is it, I'm is painting it a picture. <laughs> I just Ooh. like that. I never used to trust it, but I do trust it now. Because I never used to think that it would actually arrive. But you do all the shopping on the internet, and then it turns out in about 150 different boxes, all those stupid polystyrene filling stuff, and you've got to take all that. Isn't that right? Yeah, all that yeah. rubbish. You buy, you buy one little thing, and it comes in a box that size, and you know you, you thought it was all going to come in one box. It's all done, but no. For the next 20 days, you've got a postman knocking at the door at inconvenient times. You've got another bloody password assignment. <laughs> <laughs> and another load of boxes to get rid of. And another load of those stupid polystyrene things that children choke on because they think it's popcorn. <laughs> I, the, the thing that gets me is wrapping. I can't get my head around it. That is the best, it's the best thing about buying a gift, I think, when you're in like, a department store and they go, do you want it wrapped? And oh, you go, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, don't worry about that. I did it okay. last year, though, and I got a bunch of stuff wrapped, went to a big department store, got a bunch of stuff, got everything wrapped, and then didn't know what uh. anything was. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I had to unwrap all the presents. Uh. I had my own little Christmas morning and went, oh, look what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I do the thing that all blokes do at some point when wrapping presents, where you go, I might do this one like a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the only person who's ever done it. You've gone, oh, my God, I've just had an Eureka moment. <laughs> They get bigger and bigger. It's a pair of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Cracker. <laughs> what, what I do in most scenarios when I get given a present, the first thing I always say, it's a little tip of advice for you, very good. So open whatever it is, just open it, just look at it and goes, and you just go, this isn't my main present, is it? <laughs> this is just some little bauble to go along with the main present, isn't it? Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.